I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. Government of India to import cheetahs from abroad. Giant super mountain stretching across entire supercontinent controlled the evolution of life on Earth. And physics surprise, protons are probably actually smaller than long thought. Let's move on to story number one. Well, the government to import cheetahs from abroad. The cheetah was declared extinct in India in 1952. Currently, there are no cheetahs in any national park or wildlife sanctuary in India. The cheetah is the only large carnivore to have become extinct in independent India. The government of India is holding consultation meetings with African countries for bringing cheetahs into the country. 12 to 14 cheetahs are intended to be obtained from South Africa or Nambia or other African countries over five years as per the action plan. The such introduced cheetahs would be fitted with satellite or GSM, GPS, VHF radio collars before their release in the wild to enable monitoring remotely. Nearly 12 to 14 wild cheetahs, 8 to 10 males and 4 to 6 females from various parks or reserves or areas that are ideal for establishing a new cheetah population would be imported as required from African countries as a founder's stock for 5 years initially and then as may be needed for the program. The centre has allotted Rs 38.70 crores for the Cheetah introduction project up to 2025-26, the Union government told the Lok Sabha. As much as Rs 38.70 crores under the ongoing centrally sponsored scheme of Project Tiger has been allocated to the Cheetah introduction project for the years 2021-22 till 2025-26. Ashwini Kumar Chaube, Minister of State for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, informed the Parliament on Monday. As there are no cheetahs left in the wild in India, therefore to introduce them in the country, they have to be brought from abroad. Cheetah has been an integral part of the Indian ecosystems, a major evolutionary force and an important cultural heritage. Their restoration will likely result in better conservation of open forest, grassland and scrub ecosystems for which they will serve as a flagship species, Mr. Chaube added. And let's move on to story number two. And giant supermo stretching across entire supercontinent controlled the evolution of life on Earth. Giant mountain ranges at least as high as the Himalayas and stretching up to 8,000 kilometers across the entire supercontinents played a crucial role in the evolution of early life on Earth, according to a new study by researchers at the Australian National University, ANU. The researchers tracked the formation of these super mountains throughout Earth's history using traces of zircon with low lutelium content, a combination of mineral and rare earth element only found in the roots of high mountains where they form under intense pressure. The study found the most giant of these super mountains only formed twice in Earth's history, the first between 2000 and 1800 million years ago and the second between 650 and 500 million years ago. Both mountain ranges rose during periods of supercontinent formation. When the mountains eroded, they provided essential nutrients like phosphorus and iron to the oceans, supercharging biological cycles and driving evolution to greater complexity. The super mountains may also have boosted oxygen levels in the atmosphere complex life to breathe. The research has been published in the Earth and Planetary Science Letters. And let's move on to story number three. Well, a physics surprise, protons are probably actually smaller than long thought. Our office chair, the air we breathe, the stars in the night sky, they're all made of atoms, which in turn are composed of electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons are negatively charged. According to current knowledge, they have no expansion, but are point-like. 
a few years ago, a novel measurement technique showed that protons are probably smaller than had been assumed since the 1990s. The discrepancy surprised the scientific community. Some researchers even believed that the standard model of particle physics would have to be changed. And physicists at the University of Bonn and the Technical University of Darmstadt have now developed a method that allows them to analyze the results of older and more recent experiments much more comprehensive than before. And to determine the radius of a proton, one can bombard it with an electron beam in an accelerator when an electron collides with the proton, both change their direction of motion similar to the collision of two billiard balls. In physics, this process is called elastic scattering. The larger the proton, the more frequently such collisions occur. Its expansion can therefore be calculated from the type and extent of the scattering. And the higher the velocity of the electron beam, the more precise the measurements. However, this also increases the risk that the electron and proton will form new particles when they collide. At high velocities or energies, this happens more and more often. In turn, the elastic scattering events are becoming rarer. Therefore, for measurements of the proton size, one has so far only used the accelerator data in which the electrons had a relatively low energy. In principle, however, collisions that produce other particles also provide important insights into the shape of the proton. The same is true for another phenomenon that occurs at the high electron beam velocities, so-called electron, positron annihilation. The researchers have developed a theoretical basis with which such events can also be used to calculate the proton radius. This allows us to take into account data that has so far been left out. Using this method, the physicists reanalyzed readings from older as well as very recent experiments, including those that previously suggested a value of 0.88 femtometers. With their method, however, the researchers arrived at 0.84 femtometers, about 5% smaller than was assumed in the 1990s and 2000s. The study appeared in Physical Review Letters and with this, we come to an end of this edition of Science Time. We'll be back with more exciting stories from the world of science next week. Stay tuned to India Science. Thank you for watching. Namaskar.